Morning, everybody. Good to see everyone. Glad to be here. And um, feeling better than I was last night. Um, I know that some y'all have been talking about prayer requests. Y'all please, I know Miss Nash is on the list, but y'all please lift her up. Got an email from her. Um, she's having a lot of issues um, with her house and um, struggling with the insurance company and I'm not sure exactly everything that's going on. But she sent me a message, just asked us to pray for her. And um, so y'all please continue to lift her up. This um, lockdown has had a big toll on her because she's a, she works with contracts and hadn't been able to really do any, a whole lot. So um, just continue to lift her up. And uh, also that church, Young Street um, Baptist Church, Community Baptist Church, continue to lift them up as well. Our teachers and um, our staff and the students coming back on Monday. So that'll be interesting. And it'll be AB day. So I think if our calculations were right, we'll have about 300 in the building at one time, which is really small for our school. I'm not sure how the other schools are going to be, but that's that's uh, very few kids in the building. So um, just excited to get them back. We have any unspoken prayer requests? Me too. Let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for another day. We thank you for the blessings that you've given us, Lord. Father, we thank you so much for this cool weather that we enjoy today. Father, I thank you for this group that's in here today, Lord, for their diligence and prayer. Lord, for their love for their Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we have so many between us on our hearts and on our minds that are in need of prayer. And Father, I lift each and every one of them up. Father, we lift up those that are sick, those in the hospital. Maybe those that are battling depression. Those that, Father, are, are worried about this disease. Lord, we lift them up to you. Father, we pray for those that are caretakers. The ones who, day in and day out, care for the needs of, of the sick loved one. Father, we especially pray for those in our lives and that we come in contact with that are lost. Father, I pray that something we say or do would just uh, bring them closer to getting to know you as their Lord and Savior. Father, help us to take advantage when you give us opportunities to share your word. Father, I pray for our pastor tonight as he brings the message. Pray for Evangelina as she brings the song. Lord, we lift up Pastor Frankie as he's with his mom. And Lord, I just pray that you give us a good night. And Father, may you be glorified in all that's said and done. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. We are in Psalm 56. And if you are willing and able, we would ask that you would... Uh, stand for the reading of God's word. It says, Be merciful to me, O God, for man would swallow me up. Fighting all day, he oppresses me. My enemies would hound me all day. For there are many who fight against me, O Most High. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God, I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? All day they twist my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They gather together. They hide. They mark my steps. When they lie and wait for my life, shall they escape by iniquity? In anger cast down the peoples, O oh God. You number my wanderings. Put my tear into your bottle. Are they not in your book? When I cry out to you, then my enemies will turn back. This I know because God is for me. In God I will praise his word. In the Lord I will praise his word. 
In God I put my trust. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Vows made to you are binding upon me, O God. I will render praises to you. For you have delivered my soul from death. Have you not kept my feet from falling? That I may walk before God in the light of the living. Thank you, Stan. Good evening, church. Uh, tonight I'm going to sing the hymn, I'm Thine, O Lord. We'll all sing together and praise God. I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Oh, the pure delight of a single hour that before thy throne I spend. When I kneel in prayer and with thee, my God, I commune as friend with friend. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. There are depths of love that I cannot know till I cross the narrow sea. There are heights of joy that I may not reach till I rest in peace with thee. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. All right. A half chair can travel. Now I'm going to need help. I'm going to be up here, but I'm going to be over here and then back and forth, so you might have to move the camera. Now, this is a participation sport Bible study. You all know that, right? Everybody sit in your chair like this. Ready? Don't make me get out Sensei Daryl. I will. Take your seatbelt. Put it on. Click. Everybody clicked in. I didn't hear the clicks, Jimmy Benoit. Ready? Get your chair. Pick it up. And move it. How many people have been worrying in the last six months? Anybody worry too much? Hold your Bible and tell the truth. Okay, better. Just because your chair's been over here. 
You're doing it on your strength and you're trusting in your strength and you're hoping on this society and this government or this whatever to fix this. What you just did when you buckled up and moved over, mentally I hope you did, is you got on the throne of grace. And you're going to rest and you're going to sit on the throne of grace tonight. And you're going to be taught how to rest on the throne of grace and stop putting everything into society's control or your control. Have you ever realized society's not in control? I've realized I'm not in control. How about you? But right here, throw yourself on the throne of grace. You're going to see it so clearly. And I did it purposely, pick up my chair and move. I want you to do it purposely in your life. When you got the wrong mindset and you're not trusting God, that you make a change and don't accept anything less than Psalm 56 to live by. I pray you get it because it's powerful. Psalm 56, the first thing he does, we're changing my position. Verse 1, be merciful to me. God, I am Throwing myself on the throne of grace because that's where I get mercy. What does merciful mean? I don't want to get what I deserve. There's confession. Humility, humbleness, turning to God. If I got what I deserve, God, I'm in trouble. Be merciful to me. You know, that's all we can really do when, when society and, and situations get tough. Be merciful to me, because that's the one I will account for. I'm throwing myself on the hand of God. When I don't know what the truth is in life, and things don't make sense, I go to the one who is always speaks truth, and that's God and God alone. Amen? It's free, grace, mercy, love, care, security, trust. And when you have that, all fear will be banished. Right after that, for man would swallow me up. Aren't you glad you don't have to depend on this world for your eternity, for your care, for your mental state, for your spiritual state? Think about it. Think about how many people right now in the United States, through the world, are looking for places of worldly governments. And, and I love government. I pray for government. Trust me. I'm not always happy with them, nor am I always happy with myself, by the way. But imagine if that's all we had to trust in. What a mess this world would be in. But as Christians, we trust in God. Anybody say amen? Amen. I don't have my chair here anymore. I have it here. Because if it was here, this world would swallow me up. That's what the psalmist is saying. But I threw myself on the throne of grace. Throw yourself. Change your posture. We are Christians. We are a child of God Almighty. We are called a royal priesthood. He will care for us. Second part, verse 1. Fighting all day, he oppresses me. <laughs> and boy, this world right now can oppress you if you're not careful. Hold you down, beat you down. My enemies would hound me all day. What is your enemy? I know you think of people. What about your spiritual enemies? Stealing your peace, your joy, your attitude, your outlook, your hope. For there are many who fight against me, O oh, Most High. I will say what I see here, but then I'm going to tell you about what's there. Oh, most high. And by the way, my posture's in the chair of the throne of grace, and his hand holds me. Anybody say amen? Sometimes we forget that. Verse 3. Articulate. When you have concerns, pray through them. Pray through them. Do you all pray through the Bible? Think about that. Monday night, I love men's 
and we were praying through the Bible, and we were talking about certain parts of the Bible, and I've got where I will break it down word by word by word, and every part of that word, study, every word, know, every word, pray over. And when it's talked about um, blessed are those who are sorrowful, I have prayed through that sorrowful so many times. To me, that's brokenness. So when you finally, you ask, what do you think, Daryl? Brokenness, brokenness. Blessed are you and broken. You see, that's when God's the most powerful. When we realize, he, and not that he's more powerful, but in our mindset, understanding he's so powerful when we realize our brokenness. Whenever I am afraid, I love the articulation of confession. How many of us are speaking words of trust? Whenever I'm afraid, there's confession. God, sometimes it's scary. I will trust in you. We need to learn to be people that articulate to God. I will trust in you. I will trust. Sometimes we have to have a good little sit down and talk with ourselves. Self, what are you thinking? You will trust in God. I think we need to talk to ourselves, encourage ourselves. I will trust in God. I'm not in the chair of being afraid. I'm in the chair of the throne of grace. I will trust. Trust you, God. And in God, I will praise his word. Three parts, three Ps, three praises we should have. Praise God for his providence. He's in control. I truly believe he's in control. Praise him for his power. His providence, he has a plan. His power, he can bring it about. And his promises. Know the promises of God. In God, I will praise his word. His promises. When you feel afraid, go read them. In God, I have put my trust. And now we see the theme. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear. Write it a thousand times. Remind yourself. Anybody ever get punished when they were little? And your parents would have you do something repetitive? One of the things I was really bad at, and I don't know if it was a good lesson or a bad lesson, but it's kind of marked me how I live. When we would leave a room that nobody was going to be in for a while and not turn off the light, my stepfather didn't like that. So I was the worst at leaning on lights, and he didn't like that. So I remember one time I got a punishment to walk from the living room to the bathroom, turn the light on, turn the light off, go back, and then repeat it 50 times. To this very day, I turn off lights. Anybody say amen? Maybe we need to write that on a chalkboard, walk back, write it. I will trust in God. I will not fear. Raise it, walk back, walk back again. Until it's so deep into our soul, 50 years later, I'm still like, ah, I couldn't break that habit if I tried. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? I am safe in God's hands. How many of y'all really feel that? I'm good. I'm safe. And I'm not talking about mask or no mask. I'm talking about my soul, my life. I, I, I want to be wise and take precautions. But I don't have to fear. I don't like living in fear. I did that too long. I don't do it. Somebody told me years ago, your fear button is broken, Daryl. I'm like, well, maybe that's a good thing. We don't have to be fearful. Verse 5. All day. They twist my words. I want you to go and circle. And if you look at my notes, I have done just this. Circle every they or there in the next three verses. All day they. I want you to see the comparison, then I'm going to ask you something. Twist my words. Their thoughts, first their words, now their thoughts, are against me for evil. They, they gather, circle they, together. Birds of a feather. 
flock together. They hide. They mark their steps. They lie and wait for my life. Shall they escape in inequity? Now, in a minute, we're going to see the comparison to God's children. But this is something we have to be very careful about when we're going through hard times. And I'm going to preach for a minute and I'll get back. All day, do I twist my words? Are my thoughts wrong of evil and not good? Do I gather together with the wrong people doing the wrong things? Do I have things that I I hide? Have I marked my steps? Going the wrong path, doing the wrong thing? Do I lie in wait? Do I think I'm going to escape by inequity? You see, God's comparison, two sides of lives. And it's really easy to talk about them when it's not as easy to say, maybe the them is me. You see, watch my chair now again. This is the worldly chair. It's so hypocritical to say, I live here where I trust God, but my actions are here. Because you could say you're over here in the throne of grace, but you live like the world, and you're not going to escape the punishment that the world's got. Anybody say amen? You see, that's so hypocritical. And, and we should be able to say in our lives and in our hearts, and no one's perfect, but boy, we should sure want to try. It should be in our heart to, to live for God that, that I don't live like this anymore. I don't lie in wait. I don't twist words. I don't do these things. I don't live like the world. I live on the throne of God, so I expect then God's going to take care of me. But if I live like this, what might I expect? You see, not only do we mentally pick up our chair, we mentally pick up our lives and say, I don't live like that. I used to live like that, and I paid a price. But thanks be to God, I came to the mercy and the throne of grace, and he forgave me. But more than that, he empowered me to start changing and living in the throne and in his power. Because now I can tell you where I do live. In anger, cast down the peoples. Oh God, you number my wanderings. See, when I'm on the throne of grace, God numbers my wanderings. He knows my steps. He knows my missteps. Put my tears into your bottle. And on the throne of grace, I still may have tears and sorrows. God says, I'm saving them because I've collected them and wiped them all. Isn't that beautiful? Are they not in your book? Revelation 20, two books. Actually, one book and then a section of books. The book of life, the name of believers. When we give our life to Christ, we not only change our posture, we change our position, we change ourselves to the throne of grace, but our name is written in the book of life. But one thing, I I don't know why I never caught this before. We should always look for new gems in the Bible, and y'all probably caught this before. I saw, I always said there's two books, the book of life and the book of death. But now I, I say, no, there's more than two books. There's the book of life, book, singular, and then he says the book plural that list everybody who has not come to Christ since I said oh my goodness think about the opening of the books but I'm in your book God I've changed my posture I've changed my direction I confess my Lord and I'm in his hand And I'm in the book of life. And he collects my tears. Why do I fear? Verse 9. Concerns. So we got some concerns. Where do you take them? 
when I cry out to you. I believe many, many Christians don't pray as often and as frequent and as fervent as they should. When I cry out to you, then my enemies will turn back. God, I can pray. I can't affect my enemies, but you can. They may not fear me, but they, you, you can, you're powerful. This I know. Look at the eyes, circle them. When I cry, first I, second, this I know. When I cry out to God, I can know some things. Because God is for me. I'm on the throne. Of grace is where my posture and my life lives. I love God. I live for God. I cry out to him. He'll control my enemies. And I can know a few things. Why should I know them? Because God is for me. In God I, next I, will praise his word. When you have a problem in life, Cry it out to God. Go find the word of God and the promises that relate to it and praise it. You see, we can have a time where we cry out and then we praise out. Find the word. Praise him. Praise him some more. In the Lord, I will praise his word. In God, I, next I, have put my trust. Look where my chair stands. I praise him there. I cry out to him there. I trust him there. And God, I have put my trust. The next I, I will not be afraid. By the way, scary thing, what can you do to me? What can man do to me? You see, it's a psalm of profession and trust. And purposely, I put the chair there. to, to why, why do we lose thoughts of our posture and our position and forget where we sit or we stand and start acting like the world who doesn't have God holding them in his hands. I throw myself on your mercy seat. Verse 12, Psalm 56. Vows. Have you made your vows to God? Vows made to you are binding upon me. Listen, God. I make vows to you. I think we all especially have made some vows to God when we are deeply in trouble. Oh, God, I'm going to live for you. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. If you'll just fix this giant problem. I know you're looking at me like, I've never done that. Yes, you have. When I was a little kid, oh, God, if you give me a big, big bass beer and everybody, I promised God and I would think about things I would do. I would catch the bass day later, forget everything. I got saved years later, praise God. Are your vows just as binding when everything's going your way as they were when you spoke them, when you were broken and feeling brokenness and without God's comfort and care, you would have fallen in pieces. Vows made to you are binding upon me, God. I will render praises to you. It is my duty to render praises to God. But it's also your duty to make vows to God that are binding whether everything's falling apart 
or everything's going well. I've made my vows. Next step. For you have delivered my soul from death. I'm going to tell you about my current state. My soul's delivered from death. Isn't that beautiful? What can man do? It is a verbal looking that I'm going to come out of the grave and visual for others to see just like Christ came out of the grave. Period. You, have you not kept my feet from falling? Hmm. How many of y'all are doing pretty good not falling into the old sins you may have fell into as a younger person? Anybody? Just me? Is everybody tired? Yeah, come on. I'll keep doing it. We'll just stay here a while. The only thing that I can say about me not doing all the things I used to do Look what God has done. See, that's the life of our new position and posture on the throne of grace. That we can have confidence. My soul is delivered and my life is kept. I don't even have to fear. How do you know you won't go back to like you used to be? You see, when Shelly and I got engaged, you can ask her the stories. People come to her and say, you don't want to date him. They used to call me Iceman. You're dating the Iceman. Like, Iceman? I'm like, mm, what are you talking about? <laughs> no, nah, reputation's kept up to you. But you see, what they didn't know is the power of a new creation. And Shelley believed when I accepted Christ a few months after we started dating. She believed it. How many of y'all believe you're a new creation? I don't have to fear going back to the person I used to be. That's the old creation. It died in Christ. And my new life is in Christ alive. We don't have to fear going back to where we used to be. How many of y'all are excited about that? I don't have those old draws. I don't. Things I used to do I find disgusting. And I praise God for that. I know it's been 20, 30 years, but it doesn't matter. We, we should see our new life as such a beautiful thing. And God... the living that's heaven don't y'all know we have a mighty posture in Christ it is powerful it is strong it is cared for it is kept it is protected it has I've made my vows Oh, soul. And then I got to be honest with myself, and so do you. How often does something happen? 
They say in your life you'll have so many things that are so traumatic that will come in that your world is turned upside down. But their state of well-being mentally and spiritually. They're like, look at, I've lost everything. Look at, God must not love me. Look at, I bet my sins aren't forgiven. Look at, God's not hearing my prayers. Mentally, they got back here. The devil is a liar. And he'll tell you this is your posture. And when he does, you got to tell him he's a liar. Let me read Psalm 56 to you, devil. And I tell you, I'm on the mercy seat. Isn't that a beautiful psalm? I pray it blessed y'all tonight. You can tell I really enjoyed studying it, going deep. Remember, every word of every verse, pray through it. Lord God, what do you mean by you keep my feet? What do you mean, God, about my vows? And then all of a sudden it comes alive. That's where I love to live. Where that word comes alive because you prayed. There is no greater teacher in this world or out of this world than the Holy Spirit. And when you pray through the scriptures, God will teach you things deeper than any man ever can. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for teaching us. And tonight you taught us one of the reasons we lose our hope and trust. Not because you haven't 